Number 57, integrated concepts. Calculate the angular velocity, omega, of an electron orbiting a proton in the hydrogen atom. Given the radius of the orbit is 0.53 times 10 to the minus 10 meters, you may assume that the proton is stationary and the centripetal force is supplied by Coulomb attraction. All right, so basically, here's a little picture. We got a proton in the middle, right? Electron rotating around, the, uh, uh, around a particular uh, distance relative to the proton. And what we got to do is we got to find the angular velocity, okay, of this particular electron. So the first things first, pretend this picture were static. You got a proton here, you got an electron here. What do you know about what's going on between them, right? How are they interacting? Well, they're interacting via this attractive force, right? Proton is positive, electron is negative, and therefore there should be a, an attractive force. Now, we're trying to calculate the angular speed or angular velocity of the electron. And therefore, I want to talk about the forces on that electron. All right, I don't really care about the forces acting on the proton. I care about the forces acting on the electron. And therefore, I know that the force vector I'm going to draw now is going to be in this direction for that electron, right? This is the force, the force of attraction, right? The electric force, okay? Now, this picture should begin to start to look, you know, begin to start start to look or begin to look, I don't think I need both of them, right? Begin to look or start to look like a centripetal acceleration type of a problem, right? I mean, you know you have this thing circling, right? Traveling in a circular orbit in order for this thing to be traveling in a circle. There must be some centripetal force or some force pointing towards the center all the time, okay? So let's start with that really, really simple idea, okay? So I know that there is an attractive force here, okay? And I also know that this thing is moving in a circular orbit and therefore there must be some centripetal force being supplied. So we know that the centripetal force F sub C must equal to MA, right? MAC. You know, this is just, this is literally just a, 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 a simple, uh, it's, it, it's based off of F is equal to MA. I mean, this FC, it's just a centripetal force. It's still a force. And this AC is in a centripetal acceleration. It's still an acceleration. All this means is a force pointing towards the center of an object making a circle, right? And this acceleration meanings an acceleration pointing towards the center. All right, that's all. So now, what is the centripetal force in the problem? Well, the centripetal force is being supplied as they told us even in here in the, in the little hint or whatever you may assume, okay? The centripetal force is being supplied or is the force of attraction between the, the electron and the proton. So this is basically the electric force will equal then M-A-C. Okay, so now we're saying to ourselves, well, you know, where is angular, where does, where does angular velocity, you know, fit into this? Well, you got to remember one formula, guys. It's that the centripetal acceleration will equal R times omega squared. Take a look back to like, you know, the rotational uh, kinematics chapter. You'll see this, all right? So now what I can do basically is substitute this on in for A sub C. So we realize now we're getting... We got the electric force is going to be equal to the mass. The mass of what, by the way? The mass of the electron. Why? Remember, if I'm talking about the forces on the electron, I have to be consistent then in every other thing that I'm talking about. Meaning, the force uh, that is acting on that electron, the electric force that's acting on the electron, must equal the mass of the electron multiplied by the centripetal acceleration that that electron is experiencing. Okay? So we have to be consistent. And therefore, now when I substitute... I'm going to say the radius, multiplied now by the angular speed of what squared? The angular speed of the electron, the angular velocity of the electron, all right? So what I realize, and all, what does R represent? It's just the distance, right? All it is is the distance of the circular orbit that this electron over here is making. But we know what it is already. So we actually know everything in this formula. So let's solve for omega, right? So omega here, omega squared will be equal to Fe all over MR. Take the square root of both sides, and we realize that we'll be able to get rid of that square, and voila, here's your, here's your formula. So the angular speed here will be equal to the square root of the electric force. Now, what is the electric force? Well, it's this whole crazy piece on over there, right? You know that the electric force will be equal to K times Q1 times Q2 all over the distance between those two things squared. So why don't we just simply find that first, okay? 
So 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. One of them is a proton. And what's the charge of a proton? It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And the other thing is an electron, right? So what's that? It's negative. Don't worry about it because it's all absolute value. So it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And then divide it by the distance between them. What's the distance between them in the picture? It's 0.53 times 10 to the minus 10. So why don't we just calculate this value so we don't have to fit all this craziness into the formula there. All right, so it's gonna be 8.99 times 10 to the 9th multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th squared essentially, right, divided by then. Oh, don't forget to square the bottom, Andrew. That reminded me. And if your name is Andrew, I, I was talking to you too, okay? So uh, 0.53 divided by or 0.53, excuse me, times uh, 10 to the minus 10th, and then square that. And here we go. We get a value of about 8.19 times 10 to the negative 8, and that's in terms of newtons. So now this value we can simply plug in for the F sub E here, all right? So there's going to be 8.19 times 10 to the minus 8th, all then divided by the mass of the electron, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. It's not given in the problem. It's either assume that you memorize it or that you'll have a table uh, for reference. So 0.53 times then 10 to the minus 10th. Okay, this is still all under the square root there. And omega finally becomes, let's see. So square root of that answer divided by then, parenthesis 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 multiplied by 0.53 times 10 to the minus 10. And what do we get here? 4.4.12 times 10 to the uh, times 10 to the 16th. Excuse me. Times 10 to the 16th, and that is in radians per second, right? That's the angular speed. So, I'll, I'll, it, it's it's moving. It's moving. All right, guys, thanks for very much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out by subscribing, hitting the like button, and uh, telling your friends, all right? We appreciate it. Take care.